Hello, my name is Simonize and welcome to another Simonize Guide video. Today, we're talking about everything you need to know about Phase 5 for your Rogue in the Burning Crusade Classic. Phase 5 and Sunwell Plateau have the most powerful items in all of Burning Crusade. This will be a quick guide answering common questions and talking about what items are most important to get. And we're going to start right into it with professions. A lot of people ask, what are the best professions to use uh, for the most raid DPS? And here we can see that the difference between engineering, enchanting, and jewel crafting is really not substantial. Any two of these three will provide good raid DPS increase from your professions. Leatherworking is another option. If you don't have someone else doing drums in your party, drums is going to be the most important profession buff outclassing any of these others. But usually you have a shaman or someone else to provide drums for you. There is another benefit to leatherworking though, that you can get the Carapace of Sun and Shadow, which is an alternative chest item to Bladed Chaos Tunic, which might be highly contested. So having a second option can be very good and give you an upgrade where you wouldn't otherwise have one. The Shattered Sun Offensive is a new reputation that comes out in Phase 5. This faction provides some decent items for fresh rogues, basically nothing of interest for a well-equipped raiding rogue. The badge vendors on the Isle of Queldenas are not immediately available. They're unlocked as the island progresses on your server with total daily quest completion. Uh, once it does unlock, there are a handful of items that are small upgrades, but for the most part, the badge upgrades are not important for a rogue. The Trousers of the Scryer's Retainer are really only an upgrade if you're running 5 of 5 Slayer's set and don't have Cursed Vision yet, and even then, very small. The Crossbow of Relentless Strikes is the only one that's like a definite upgrade, but it's 150 badges for about a 4 to 5 DPS upgrade when you're doing, you know, between 2,500 and 3,000 DPS. You know, 4 to 5 DPS is a drop in a bucket. And the Angelista's Revenge is a one agility upgrade over Signet of Primal Wrath very small upgrade as well. The Magister's Terrace is a new five-person dungeon uh, that comes with Phase 5. Uh, you must complete Normal Mode once to finish the quest Hard to Kill, and that unlocks Heroic Mode. Uh, normal Mode can apparently be ran repeatedly for Reputation, allowing a player to access Profession Recipes Day 1 from the Shattered Sun Offensive Reputation. Uh, this unlocks Gem patterns that are very good, but not particularly of interest for Rogues. The Shard of Contempt drops in Heroic Mode Magister's Terrace. It's decent for rogues, but there's issues with overcapping expertise and having better options available make it not as stellar as you may remember. Without overcapping expertise, this is how the trinkets rank for a single target 2 minute boss, with Black and Naru Sliver and Dragon Spine Trophy at the top, Warp Spring Coil 3rd, Shard of Contempt 4th, and other trinkets below that. In most cases, you're actually going to be wasting some of the expertise from Shard of Contempt which would push it down a little farther on that chart and make it, you know, even less remarkable. Uh, for human rogues, the expertise rating cap is 44 rating against bosses, and for non-human rogues, it's 63. If you have no other expertise items, Shard of Contempt will bring you exactly to your cap as a human. If you have any other expertise items as a human, you know, they're entirely wasted. And uh, even as a non-human, the plus 25 from Belt of 100 Deaths or the plus 24 expertise rating from Slayer's Boots will push you a little bit over the cap and start to waste some stats and again, push Shard of Contempt farther down on that comparison list. Really not that remarkable, but a good option, say if you don't have Dragon Spine Trophy to use. There are two main gear strategies when it comes to gearing up in a new phase. And the first is to get the biggest upgrades first to deal the most damage as soon as possible. And the second strategy is to prioritize the rarest and most contested items, even if they aren't the biggest upgrades, uh, in order to maximize the likelihood that you reach a full best in slot character as soon as possible. Which strategy works for you is going to be depend on your priorities as a character and the loot system that your guild is using. Here, I'm just going to give you rankings of the different items and how big of an upgrade they are. Now, unfortunately, a lot of our leather items are contested by other classes like Warrior, Enhancement, Hunter, and are also best in slot for them. So for a lot of these, we're going to have competition. These are relevant items from Phase 5 for Rogues, and they're listed as single item upgrades starting from a Phase 3 best in slot gear setup. And you can see at the top of the list is the Leggings of the Immortal Knight. These, no matter what you're doing as a rogue, need to be at the top of your priority list. They are so massively more powerful than what you had in Phase 3. It's, it's ridiculous. Leggings of the Immortal Knight are the go-to number one item that you want to get out of Phase 5. And next up, we have Slayer's Boots. 
the tier boots, which should be much less contested as a tier token. Um, a lot of people will want their tier, but the tier tokens themselves are much more common drops. So these should be a little easier to get than the Legends of Immortal Knight that I assume pretty much every physical DPS is going to want. After that, we have the Bladed Chaos Tunic and the Carapace of Sun and Shadow. These are your chest armor slots. And like I said before, with Leatherworking, provides you a second option. Everyone's gonna be wanting the Bladed Chaos Tunic as their best in slot chest. But if you're a leather worker and you can grab Carapace of Sun and Shadow with relatively no contest, take that and then bump other items like Slayer's Belt or Cloak of Unforgivable Sin up a little bit higher on your priority list and maybe get those significant upgrades. You can see the difference between the Chaos Tunic and the Carapace of Sun and Shadow is really not that much, only about 5 DPS. For your ring options, you have Band of Ruinous Delight, Storm Rage Signet Ring, and Hard Corium Band. Really, these three rings are all very similar in power level. You're going to find some niche situations where two of these three outperform, you know, the other one by a little bit. The difference between these three rings is not significant and you should not worry about getting a particular two of them. Just get any two of them and you're good to go. The only trinket of interest is the blackened Naru sliver to replace the warp spring coil. This is a very powerful trinket and in a boss fight sims at about plus 27.3 DPS. So a decent upgrade, not as big as some other items, but the high chance to trigger on the Black and Naru Sliver means it's very likely to activate right when you start combat, making it a very good trinket for trash and probably a little more valuable than the spreadsheet indicates. For weapons, Warglaives are still the best. If you don't have Warglaives, your second best option depends on if you're human or non-human. Non-human rogues will want Hand of the Deceiver and human rogues will want Muramasa. Your offhand remains Blade of Savagery from Mother Shahraz in Black Temple. The Dragon Scale Encrusted Longblade at 1.5 speed is just not quite as good as Blade of Savagery. For your talents, you have a sword setup and a fist and sword setup. So if you're using two swords, you want to use this talent specialization. And if you're using a fist and sword hybrid with Hand of the Deceiver, you want to use this talent specialization, which is just moving a couple points around taking some out of assassination, putting a little more in combat to be able to pick up five of five fist weapon specialization as well as five of five sword weapon specialization. There are quite a few crafted items that are very good. It may be wise to stock up on some crafting materials now before the prices go up when these recipes are actually available for players to obtain. Gloves of Immortal Dusk are a BOE crafted leatherworking item, so you don't have to be a leather worker to use these. Every rogue is going to want to have the Gloves of Immortal Dusk, so these materials are going to be necessary for you. The Hard Corium Band is one of the three very good ring options. It's another BOE crafted item. You don't have to be a jewel crafter to use this item. The Carapace of Sun and Shadow that we mentioned before is a bind on pickup crafted item, so it's only accessible if your character is a leather worker. It's not best in slot, but it's a very good option. The Hard Corium Choker is a bind on pickup crafted necklace by Jewel Crafter, so you do have to be a Jewel Crafter to access this necklace. But as we saw in the profession section, the gain from this necklace compared to the Clutch of Demise second best is pretty similar to the benefit provided by engineering or by enchanting for your character's raid DPS. So I wouldn't consider it a necessary thing to get, but if you want to go jewel crafting, you're gonna wanna get it. In Sunwell's original release, the bosses were gated with the progression of the Isle of Queldenas dailies. That means you could not kill all the bosses on the first day. Right now, there's no indication that that will change. However, it's a pretty uh, weird mechanic, and I imagine there's some possibility that Blizzard may release Sunwell without gates in it and have Kill Jaden accessible on the first day. We will see. And that's it. Boom, we're done. Good luck, have fun. Sunwell looks awesome, and be sure to catch the streams. We'll be going into Sunwell as soon as we can. If the PTR comes back up, we'll be going into Sunwell on the PTR. Uh, have a good one, and let's look forward to Wrath of the Lich King. Thanks for watching the Simonized Show. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Can't wait for more sweet videos. Links are on screen that you can watch right now. Be sure to join the Discord server and pop by on Twitch to catch me live. Links to both are in the video description. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.